as you get to know more and more about real estate, you can pretty much peg which deals are going to convert and which ones aren't. Which ones are actually have a high probability of converting. For example, if 20 people called me with short sale deals, I would probably only work on six to seven of the 20. What I would look for is I would look for properties, number one, if the, if the value of the property is $200,000, and I want to buy this property for 100 grand. Let's say the debt, let's say the debt on the property is 200 grand, the property's worth 180, and I want to put my first offer to the bank at, at 100 grand. Well, if I can't find comps to justify my offer, if I can't get anywhere close to what I'm going to be offering, that's not going to be a strategic choice. What you're going to do is you're going to work on that file for three or four months. What's going to happen is at the end of three or four months, the, finally the bank's going to get back to you and they're going to tell you, hey, we'll take 165, not even anywhere close to the value. And you just worked, you probably put in 30 hours into that deal. And that's 30 hours worth of wasted time that you could have eliminated by just being more strategic when you first got that initial lead, right? It's just a great example. Uh, condos, we're doing short sales on condos, a uh, big mistake. Uh, a lot of times condo complexes, all the property values sell between 190 and 210, let's say in a complex. And you think you're gonna get them to take your offer at 110? Uh, all the values are right here in this area. So it, it's just about being strategic. What do I like? I like uh, properties that are in, in transitional neighborhoods where I'm acquiring that property, uh, where the values vary from between literally ninety dollars to $200,000 a matter of a couple streets. So I'm going to buy it on the low comps, I'm going to justify my offer to the bank on the low comps, and I'm going to sell on the high comps. So that's a strategic short sale. Then that's just one way, is looking at the debt, looking at the property. It's also looking at the seller you're dealing with. What makes real estate uh, exciting is that every deal you do is different. Every deal you do is different. Every seller that you work with is different. That's also what makes it challenging. You have to understand, you probably won't do the same deal the same way every time. You're going to have a different seller, you're going to have a different buyer. They will follow a similar pattern. So you could put, uh, for example, if I'm just going to use short sales because I'm talking about it right now. You could put a short sale uh, file, you could start working that file through. It, it's pretty much going to be the same process but you're going to be dealing with a different set of emotions from the seller. You're going to be dealing with a buyer who's got different types of financing. One buyer, you might have cash. You know, another buyer might have a bank loan. So every deal is a little bit unique. And so that's why it's so important to understand that 75% of what you do will be similar, but there's always going to be 25% that's going to pop up and surprise you. And that's what education is going to solve.